Good evening, everyone. This is Wayne, and this is the video version of the Trade Report for Monday, May 14th, 2018. Well, we almost had a new all-time record high in the Russell 2000 today, but the market had other plans for it. Stay tuned to find out more. Greetings, everyone, and happy Monday, and thank you very much for joining me as I go over the action and activity in the financial markets today, and we will start off with the Russell 2000. Uh, the ticker symbol for the Russell 2000 is the RUT, R-U-T, that's what we call it. And this has been the index that has kind of led the way uh, in this recovery that we're having from this nasty February debacle that we had, subsequent attempt at a recovery, an attempt at a revisitation of the February lows that failed, and then a move back up that was sold a little bit, but you can see what's happening here. We're getting a nice kind of ascending higher lows is what we call it, but we're also getting lower highs. So when the Russell broke out of this triangle, that was basically a buy signal. And it also, get it being as close as it was to the all-time high, brought us to a place where we felt as if, hey, this may be what paves the way for all the other indexes to uh, get their act together and, and make some new highs. But what happened today was, as you can see, we had a nice push to the upside. Let me get that... Uh, circled here nice push to the upside through the 1272 and when a market moves through the 1272 the natural extension of that is the secondary target which is the 1618 which would have put us well into record territory on the russell however as you see the market had different ideas for the russell today and that push up was met with a lot of selling so if we take a look at the 15 minute chart of the uh, of the rut, we can see how uh, how the day progressed, and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. A nice push up at the get-go, you know, really nice push to the upside, and then basically a collapse with some sideways to lower action into the close. So, you know, we end up in a situation where we go, okay, this market's come a long way over the last week or two of trading. And as a result of that, we have algorithms and computer-driven trading models that are set to trigger and be accommodative of the technical levels in the market. Now, when you have a technical level that is associated with a new high, that kind of adds a one-two punch to the algorithms. And there will be profit-taking. So after several days of high after high after high. Let's go back to the daily chart here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Pretty easy to see on the daily chart here. Uh, we have, you know, we have high after high after high after high after high after high. So six days in a row of adding gains onto, in this case, the Russell, but the other indexes look very similar. And then to have one day pull back, that's really in keeping with normalcy, balance. And if you've been reading my trade report, you have seen where I have been calling for a little bit of a pullback. Um, I was actually out looking for a pullback on Friday, which we didn't really get, but it was a pretty quiet day Friday. Well, today we got that pullback I was looking for, and we may even get a little bit more. So what would a what would a, a an additional pullback look like in this market? Well, we could come back down here to the 100% uh, symmetry resistance, which would be 1591.79. We closed today at 1634, so about a nine point move to the downside in the rut. That would be a very healthy move to the downside. Keep in mind, when you're in an accumulation cycle like the one we're in, a pullback is a very important and healthy uh, component of that up move. Nothing goes up in a straight line. In fact, if we did something like this and then went like this, you know, went up to the 1618, you know, that's a new high. It's in keeping with 
you know, again, technical levels, it's, it's satisfying the algorithms and the computer driven trading models. So there's nothing wrong with a little bit of downside. The only problem with a day like today was the lack of volume in the market. And so we ended up with this just nasty choppy mess, which was virtually untradeable. So if we take a look at the ES, which is the S and P futures, as well, you know, by now, you can see where these long tails on these candles is indicative of the algorithms coming in and just buying and selling based on, you know, whatever they're, whatever they're triggered to buy and sell on, but very, very minor volume today, very minimal volume. So it was, you know, we went up, we kind of came down, we chopped around and just really kind of, you know, you had to just play it hands off today. Just let your portfolio ride. There was really nothing to do. We're still bullish. So there was no reason to sell any positions and there was certainly no reason to buy anything today. Um, certainly there's a, there's a case to be made for, you know, buy low, sell high, but we may still get a little bit more of a pullback in which case then we'll maybe look at adding to our portfolio. So that's the S and P futures. Um, I do want to show you a chart of the VIX as always. And after that, I will give you a look, see at the indexes as well. So you can see that the, the VIX is just kind of collapsing onto itself. And, you know, I was talking about the VIX going lower and lower and lower and lower, and that's what it's doing. We are, and we're, cur oh, and I just realized something. We're in a squeeze and we just fired to the downside on the VIX. What that means specifically is there's been a lot of pressure building in the VIX. And when a squeeze, which is a technical indicator, fires in a particular direction, there's normally follow through in that direction because the energy that's been building has been released and you get well, follow through. So that follow through in the VIX to the downside translates to higher prices in the broader market. And even with the market kind of flipping and flopping around today, you know, the, mar the, the VIX really didn't participate. I mean, it moved around a little bit and it actually, so I'm gonna say something that's kind of contrary to what I've been saying, the VIX actually closed higher today, <laughs> but it's it's still going lower. And like I said, we had a squeeze that fired to the downside. So the energy of the VIX, even though it did close higher, is to the downside. And that's a dynamic and a component of the market that is little understood, but suffice it to say, it appears as if the VIX will continue to go lower and the broader market will ultimately go higher. Even if the VIX flattens out or consolidates a little bit going forward over the next couple of days. The thing that needs to be taken into consideration this week is the fact that it's monthly options expiration week this week. Fund managers and institutional investors will be kind of juggling and apportioning their portfolios and getting in and out of things that are going to expire. So there could be a lot of back and forth, a lot of price action. And what we saw today, as undesirable as it is, is in all likelihood more the rule than the exception. Hopefully there'll be some traction to the upside come Wednesday or Thursday. And we can begin looking at this market a little bit more seriously for what we can expect from it as it relates to the levels it will achieve going forward. So on that subject, I do want to show you a, a chart of the S&P 500 and the Fibonacci's, as you know, are the, are the technical indicator that I rely on predominantly. I also, of course, like the Ichimoku cloud and I like the volume profile and the market profile and the squeeze as you, as you saw. So today, the S&P 500 hit its head on the 618 of 
the big February down move. So, oops, I don't want to do that. Let me get rid of that. I need to get my drawing tool. There we go. So from the big move down in February, from the high to the low, we have a 618. And that's this line right here. And that's exactly where today's market hit its head and bounced off of. The 618 is a very important Fibonacci level. It's the level just beyond the 50% level. And it presents a resistance level, but it also presents a target. Now, it's not uncommon for price to bounce off of it. And when you have a market that is coming into the 618 with a lot of momentum, it's reasonable to expect a little bit of a pullback, but there's also an expectation that it will move through it, through the 786 and up to the 100%. Now, the 100% is at 2758.31, 31, so quite a ways higher than where we are. And once it gets through there, then we look at the 1272. And the 127, and I, and I apologize, the 100% off of this move is actually the 100% symmetry, um, uh, symmetry resistance way up here. We're not going to get there. What I'm looking at as it relates to these levels here are this move here. So we're looking at coming up to this and then ultimately moving our way up to here. So, but, so 27.58 is what I'm looking for, and then 27.93.42 is what I'm looking for as well. So we've got more upside, I believe, coming into the market, and the Fibonacci levels I've drawn here are indicative of this move, of this move, of this move, and also this move right here and this move right here. So I'm taking extensions and I'm taking retracements and I'm plotting these Fibonacci lines, which is what this product, this software program, this platform called Dynamic Trader does beautifully. So this 618, which again is the 618 off of the February, the January high to the February low, uh, is where we hit our head today. So we're getting a little bit of reminiscence in the market from the February low today. And we have to make sure we're looking at that and taking it seriously. There's a lot of energy still in this market associated with those February lows. It's what has brought us all of this action, all the volatility associated with where we've come from and where we've been has been directly related to those February lows. So all of that choppiness, all of this volatility, all of this price action, all of this wide ranging uh, from, you know, like almost 2,900 down to almost 2,500, a 400 point S&P range almost has been held within the context of this here. It's an extremely powerful uh, market market movement that we've seen over the last few months. And I think we're just beginning to break out of it, but we're still, we're still in the midst of that energy to some degree. So, and that is evidenced from today's move off of the 618 from the February low um, retracement. So anyway, enough said about that. And I do want to just mention that the Russell 2000, the rut, uh, was the only the only market today that was lower. Uh, we had the S and P. Well, let me get that up here. The S and P closed up almost two and a half points, even though it bounced off the six one eight. It closed higher than Friday's close, and then we had the uh, Nasdaq, which closed up almost eight and a half points. And it also had the same issue of going higher and coming lower. The indexes kind of traded in unison today, if you will, as it relates to going higher initially and then coming down. And then the, uh, let's see, oh, the Dow. The Dow had a very nice day, up 68 points. But it was also off its highs and it, it traded lower. Now, all of the indexes ended the day with a bearish pattern 
as it relates to the candlesticks. The, the Dow ended up with what's known as a, a shooting star, which means it went high, but it couldn't hold its high. In fact, it came all the way back down almost to how, where it opened. So after a big day, it was, in my opinion, it was still a bullish move today and it did close higher, but the candlestick pattern is warning us that we could see some additional downside. And the fact that we hit the very top of the Ichimoku cloud and bounced back down again, back to the 618 on the Dow is really, it, it's a very algorithmic move. So very measured, very metered, um, very technical in, in, its, uh, in, in its movement today. That being said, I still think we could get a little bit more downside tomorrow but it's all in keeping with this new accumulation cycle we're in. And I know it sounds strange and I've said it before, but in order to keep going up, we've got to go down, <laughs> which, you know, keep that in mind. It's normal, it's healthy, and it's in keeping with balance is to take some profits, get the market to get a little bit of a downside move so it can go up again. And our key as always is watching the VIX. We need to watch the VIX. The VIX is our clue, it's our key to how the markets behave and what the markets are probably going to do going forward. Right now, um, we've got a VIX that closed below 13 at 12.93. It still closed up on the day, as I mentioned, up uh, 0.28 of a point, but it's, it's ready to go further, further to the downside. So, you know, we've got some competing dynamics in the market right now. But again, remember, we are in a monthly options expiration week, which presents an entirely new set of energies to the market. And we get a lot of choppiness, which is not good for trading. But if we know it going in, we can just kind of let the market work itself out and know that we're really still in a bullish bias right now. So we, we will keep our long positions on, we have our portfolio hedged, and we just let the market go through its gyrations, do what it does, and wait for it to just smooth out, calm down, and I think that may take a day or two. So anyway, with that, I will ask you to trade safe, trade what you see if you choose to trade at all, good night, and good trading.